If you've seen any YouTube videos from uh, Jean Pen, a French farmer scientist who pioneered heat extraction from hot compost, uh, then he captured your imagination. He was using giant compost piles to heat all his hot water and was even using the compost to run a um, anaerobic digester, which produced enough methane for him to run all his farm equipment. So my goal in this video is far more simple. I just want to heat my greenhouse during the cold Colorado winters without spending a fortune on electricity. So using the simple materials that are available in my yard, I built a pilot compost system that reached about 130 degrees Fahrenheit in the middle of the winter. So to maintain a mass of material at that, of that size at such a temperature, uh, would require probably a thousand watts of continuous power. And that would cost real money if I was going to do it with electricity. If I could extract just a fraction of that thermal energy from a compost pile, I might have a chance of actually heating my, my greenhouse. Even better, uh, compost piles are basically free and they're very much off the grid since you can have heat wherever you stick the pile. So I built a partially buried compost pile next to my greenhouse. I use an air circulation system to extract heat from the compost pile and return it to the greenhouse. In this video, I'll show you how I made my compost heater and give you some preliminary data. Uh, and if you need a teaser to keep watching, it works. Here we have a cartoon of my small lean-to greenhouse. I drilled uh, five 10-foot deep wells and I'm circulating air from the greenhouse into the wells to heat and cool it. I've called this a vertical geothermal earth tube, but others call it an earth battery. Check the description for a link to another video that gives more details on the construction. It's the end of December and we've had some brutally cold weather, but I have a variety of plants happily growing in this greenhouse. First step was to excavate the center of the compost pit to a depth of about 18 inches or a half a meter. Next, I lay 25 feet or 7 meters of drainage pipe from the greenhouse into the base of the compost pit and back. Then I attach a small duct fan, which draws only 12 watts and circulates air through that tube. So the idea is that we take uh, cold air from the greenhouse and use the heat from the hot compost to warm it and then returns it back to the greenhouse. So this fan circulates about 90 cubic feet per minute, uh, which is enough to change the air in the greenhouse um, uh, enough times in an hour to get real heating of the whole greenhouse. This is not a big greenhouse. I think it's extremely important, especially for small compost piles in cold weather, to insulate the pile. I purchased some polyethylene sandbags from Amazon and filled them with dirt from the garden. I was able to build up another foot or 30 centimeters of insulating wall around the compost pile. The sandbags allow me to build up vertically without uh, going out into the yard. Next I add the compost. I need to go into a little detail about the contents of the pile. Uh, I put branches at the bottom of the pit near the pipe, so this keeps an air layer at the bottom of the pile and, and will help uh, circulate air, which means better digestion. I then alternated layers of dry leaves, partially digested compost, and greens. I added enough water to, to moisten each layer. I got five pounds or two kilos of coffee grounds from my local coffee shop and mixed this in to supercharge the pile. I'm slightly embarrassed to admit it, but I do add urine to the pile. Uh, both urine and coffee grounds are excellent sources of nitrogen. If you have a pile that uh, needs a helping hand or won't heat up, uh, these can really get it going. So the compost pile shrinks as it digests, so I do add new material to the top just to keep the pile large and, and keep it uh, maximally insulated. This may be the most important part of the design. I add a uh, layer of one inch thick foam insulation board to the top of the pile with the foil side down. I just lay it right there on top. Finally, I cover the pile with a tarp and weigh it down with some bricks. So we had a bad windstorm this week and that tarp stayed put just fine with this arrangement. So let me justify why I designed my compost pit the way that I did. Uh, here I, I show kind of a thermal plot of a conventional above ground compost pile. Say that it's the three feet on each side for nine cubic feet or one cubic meter. The colors represent temperature. So dark blue, which is the air, is 30 degrees Fahrenheit. As we go underground, the temperature warms up. At one meter depth, it's not unreasonable to expect a temperature of 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. Look at the temperature of the compost pile. At the edges of the pile that are exposed to the air, it's 30 degrees. In the center, there's a portion above 80 degrees, which is actively digesting and creating heat. And you'll notice that the, the, the size of that center portion is much smaller than the, than the total compost pile. 
So if you partially bury the pile, we have less of it exposed to the air and more of it exposed to the warmer underground temperatures. So this means this will enlarge the center hot area of the compost slightly. So by burying the compost, you, you make the effective size of the pile bigger from a thermal standpoint. If you go further and put sandbags in the sides of the compost, um, now you're insulating the sides of, of the pile as well from the cold air. Uh, this further enlarges the hot center area of the pile. Finally, if we lay insulation in a tarp over the pile, uh, we keep cold air away from the top. So now we've enlarged the pile uh, in all four directions. Um, and if you, you compare the size of that center hot area to what we started with, with the above ground pile, it's a lot bigger. This is not purely academic. I have a long compost thermometer and I have, I've probed around the entire compost pile, which is quite, quite large. And uh, the pile is at least 80 degrees, except for the very edges of the, of the pit. So uh, this is the real deal. And if, if you want to keep a pile hot um, and not sacrifice the edges of it, you're going to need to insulate it in the cold weather. Okay, now if we lay airflow pipes at the base of the compost pit, uh, we're effectively stealing heat from the base of the compost pit and giving it to the greenhouse. Um, you can't you can't pull on it. You can't pull on your compost pit all day long. You need to let it recharge the heat. Otherwise, you're gonna you you might run the risk of burning it out. So I use something called a thermo cube, which is a simple device that basically turns on at 35 degrees, turns off at 45 degrees Fahrenheit, and um, so it ensures that I only run the compost fan and geothermal fans when it's actually cold outside. So currently, the peak temperature of my compost pile is about 110 degrees Fahrenheit or 43 degrees Celsius. It would be hotter if I wasn't stealing heat from the bottom, but it's plenty hot enough to actively digest the material. Once I see a definitive drop in temperatures, I'll turn the pile, but I'm but I tell that I'm not going to mess with it at all, except to uh, to top off the top of the pile to keep it insulated. Now let's look at some data that I collected recently on a cold but not terribly cold winter night. Uh, outside temperatures are right around freezing. I have three electronic temperature sensors in the greenhouse. The blue curve plots the temperature at the intake of the compost airflow tube. The orange plots the temperature at the outflow of the compost air, air tube. So the difference between the orange and blue curve shows how much the hot compost is heating up the air that travels through that air tube. The gray curve plots the temperature out in the middle of the greenhouse. So I'm not plotting the actual temperature here. I'm actually plotting the difference between the outside temperature and the inside temperature. So this helps correct for the fact that the outside temperature was dropping uh, somewhat as I took the measurements. So let's look at the data in, in pieces. So just before 6 p.m. or 1800 hours, I turned on the system. For the next 30 minutes, the system is warming up. So during this time, the compost outflow temperature rises nearly 10 degrees, and the greenhouse temperature rises by about 6 degrees, which is not, uh, not trivial. For the next hour, the system essentially runs in a steady state. So the compost outflow temperature holds pretty steady at about 16 degrees above outside temperature, and as does the temperature in the greenhouse and at the intake. You'll notice, though, uh, toward the end of the steady, steady state period that the, the temperature of the uh, in, inflow and inside the greenhouse started to drop. I think this is probably due to the fact that the outside temperature was dropping faster then the uh, compost temperature could keep, keep up with it. So at 745 or 1945 hours, I turned the system off. The temperature at all three stations dropped very quickly to roughly where we started. And at 830 or 2030 hours, I turned the system back on. And you can notice how the temperatures uh, rise very quickly back to about where they were. So it should give you some faith about the repeatability of these uh, measurements. So in summary, I think this compost heating system is, is a real winner, and I've tried uh, many different approaches and, and had really varying amounts of luck. This is the best, best approach that I've come across so far, and I think it's actually the most flexible and probably most consistent with off-the-grid uh, um, gardening. So I built a compost pile using materials that I've just found in my yard and kitchen, and I've been able to get it hot primarily because I've insulated my pit so well here in this cold Colorado winter. This compost is able to heat the entire greenhouse and not just, uh, not just the air right around the pipe. It may not be enough to heat your greenhouse if it's very big, but if you need to, need to, you need to heat a bigger greenhouse, you just make the compost pile bigger. 
a bigger pile has an added advantage of, of producing higher uh, temperatures in the center, not just more mass at the same temperature. You, you can get temperatures in excess of 140, 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So I hope you've, hope you've enjoyed my video. Um, if you leave comments below, I'll, I'll, I'll get to them usually within a, within a day or less uh, to the best of my ability. Uh, I don't make any money off of, of this stuff, um, but if you do click on the like and subscribe buttons, it, it boosts my ego a little bit, and uh, maybe I'll keep making these videos. Thanks for your time, and uh, happy composting.